Welcome to Yellowstone National Park. We are, oh boy, a few miles uh, west of Mammoth Hot Springs, the north end of the park. Um, looking over here at uh, Bunsen Peak, some nice fall colors with the aspens changing there. Some really beautiful ones back up here. Um, and this one's, uh, I, mean, I got a little, little, uh, little riddle for you folks today. So. A lot of times geology is like a crime scene, right? We've got, in this case, this kind of crazy crime scene spread out before us. And just like a forensic detective, we've got to take the evidence and the pieces that we see and come up with a cohesive story, come up with a, a plausible set of events that have brought us to uh, what we can see here in this, this kind of crazy crime scene. So we'll see if we can work through this together. Um, but what we have here uh, is a, just a jumbled landscape of blocks. Some of these blocks, like this one below me here, is, uh, shoot, maybe 30 feet tall. Some of these are just absolutely huge um, house-sized blocks. I'm going to work my way down to a little more stable spot. There, that's better. <clears throat> yeah, we can see the, the highway, the road in the park just below us, and these massive blocks of gray rock which spread across the highway and down towards uh, the Gibbon River down there. Um, we can see a few more of them in the trees here, but it doesn't look like the, this, uh, this unit goes very far that way. And then as we turn and look to the, suppose this is the northwest, um, we can see a lot more of the jumbled blocks. So we're looking at a, a jumbled landscape of gray rocks that's maybe, maybe a quarter mile wide and if we go from <clears throat> the highest rocks we can see up here on the slope down to the south and there, maybe that's a mile or so in length. Um, and if we look at these rocks up close, of course, we'd want to figure out what these rocks are. Um, and I think if we come over, let's see, come over to this side here. Let me drop down to this little saddle now that we've had kind of the big view. And let's see what we can see with these rocks. Uh, we can see there is some, some layering. So you can see some layering going from upper left to lower right, running through these rocks. Uh, I did not bring my rock hammer here, but these, these rocks are somewhat soft in the world of, I mean, they're hard, but uh, they're softer than steel. Um, and they're gray. They do not look like any of the volcanic rocks we tend to see here at Yellowstone. I was just, uh, at the Golden Gate um, little gap there on the Gibbon River, looking at some of the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff. This is not some of that unit. Uh, the rocks across the way at Bunsen Peak, obviously a different color. Those are about 50 million year old Eocene or so um, day sites. So that's a much older volcanic rock. And so these rocks with, with the bedding that we see here, these rocks uh, turns out are sedimentary and to maybe hopefully convince you of that. We'll put a few drops of acid on it and we can see the reaction there. So remember, whenever we see a rock reacting strongly to the dilute hydrochloric acid, it tells us that this rock has calcite in it. And because this particular rock is uh, reacting and fizzing so aggressively, we can surmise that this rock is totally made out of calcite. Uh, in places, it's somewhat porous. So there's some kind of holes in it here and there. There's actually an interesting piece I found here um, that has these holes in it as well. Uh, but because this is sedimentary, not volcanic, these aren't gas bubbles, these aren't vesicles, this has got to be some other type of process. And so if you haven't uh, deduced what we're looking at here, this is a type of limestone, uh, but unlike the limestones we see at the bottom of the ocean, this is a type of limestone called travertine. Now this may not look like your travertine countertops or what you've seen before, but travertine fundamentally is uh, calcite that precipitates out from uh, a hot spring, could be in a cave if the cave has uh, a lot of calcite uh, in, the, in the groundwater itself. And so these are big blocks, just humongous blocks of travertine. 
And the deposit here, the other part of the story, which you probably did figure out, is this is a big landslide deposit. So these blocks have just tumbled down <clears throat> from this, this terrace, uh, well, this is called Terrace Mountain, so it's a good name, but this flat-lying kind of mesa-like uh, uh, mountain up here. Uh, and those rocks up there, that's the same travertine as we see down here in the landslide deposit, except there it is very much in place. And so a couple questions here is one is, why are we getting travertine here? And we'll answer that, whoa almost slipped there. We'll answer that a little bit better when we head down to Mammoth Hot Springs because there we can see some active uh, hot springs that are forming travertine terraces. Um, so the rocks up there have been dated. They're about 400,000 years old. And so it begs an interesting question. There's no groundwater up there today. And so there's no travertine forming today. Um, so we have a couple questions really. One is, well, when was the groundwater up there? Because now it's maybe 1,000 or 2,000 feet down the hill uh, through the trees there at Mammoth Hot Springs. And then another question that might be asked is, well, what, what caused this slide? What was, the, what was the underlying cause here? And because we've got so much debris here, it's hard to see what the rock types are below all the landslide debris, but uh, I looked at a geologic map and there are a few outcrops in here, sporadic and, and spotty, of some Cretaceous age uh, shales and units that have a lot of clay and mud in them. And those are notorious for being um, very unstable on slopes. So it's not uh, too hard then to, to see why this huge landslide occurred. We know the age of the travertine 400,000 years ago. So the landslide had to occur after the travertine had formed. Um, we don't know the exact age of the landslide, although we know that this part of Yellowstone, at least as recently as 15,000 years ago, was extensively glaciated. And we don't have any glacial modification of this landslide terrain. And so the conclusion would be that the landslide is younger than the glacial activity. Uh, otherwise, the glaciers would have pushed all this stuff around, maybe sculpted it, redistributed it, um, but it wouldn't look nearly as fresh as it does today. So we've got kind of a, a rough estimate on the landslide age. It's younger than 15,000 years. We have a culprit, the tra travertines up on Terrace Mountain up there. What's interesting about those in doing a little bit of research here is um, they look different than the mammoth travertine in that they don't form sort of the stair step pattern. This is a much bigger and cohesive uh, uh, outcrop of travertine. So one idea that's been floated out there, I don't know if it's the right idea or not, but it's at least a starting point, is that possibly these were um, springs that were bubbling up into a lake. And so if you imagine uh, springs at the bottom of a lake, you would get a large, mostly horizontal, expanse of travertine at the bottom of that lake. If we go with that as a possible uh, conclusion though, at least as a hypothesis, what that means is that since that travertine formed 400,000 years ago, there's been a lot of erosion because we've got uh, the Gibbon River and then the Yellowstone River down here uh, flowing past Mammoth and then out to Gardner, Montana. And we've got an extensively deep canyon. So we, we've got to cut that canyon and that landscape uh, in uh, 400,000 years, which probably is doable, but is, is just a really rapid and accelerated rate of erosion. Um, so last thing real quick on this, and then we'll go to our next stop, is uh, how travertine forms. And we'll probably get into this more at Mammoth Hot Springs, but essentially uh, this is nothing more than um, what happens when our hot groundwater beneath Yellowstone, instead of moving through rhyolites and tufts, like we see at Norris Geyser Basin or at Old Faithful, where the acids dissolve away the tuff um, and create various clay minerals and just sort of uh, chemically weather the material. When in this part of Yellowstone, what we have in the highlands beyond Terrace Mountain, up even higher, like in the Gallatin Ranges, we have a lot of limestones. And so as the water is moving through these limestones, the water being a little bit hot, it's able to dissolve some of the calcite in that limestone, 
then the groundwater is saturated with calcite and so when it comes out of the ground as a hot spring like at mammoth or maybe up at terrace mountain once upon a time that um, calcite uh, the water evaporates largely and that calcite gets re-precipitated as mineral deposits like this travertine here so uh, we'll look at that some more when we get over to mammoth hot springs for another another video so hopefully that was uh, helpful kind of a fun little geologic riddle and puzzle here with these big blocks and kind of figuring out the evolution of this landscape here uh, in Yosemite National Park. This is also an area known as the Hoodoos. So you might see this on the park map. <clears throat> to geologists, I believe it's just the Terrace Mountain uh, landslide event. So there you go, Yellowstone National Park and more fantastic geology.